Welcome to another video from Avenue X. This is a social video, which means I'm just gonna hold my gun and start to shoot at many, many targets. What it feels like to be a Chinese drama reviewer these days, 2022, around April and May, the amount of mental suffering I have to go through trying to find one drama worth sticking to or worth making a video on. Neiyu Wanla, which literally means mainland entertainment business is done, is dead particularly in drama land. Let's start with a drama that actually I have nothing to complain about and it's totally my fault that I cannot continue watching it, which is a drama that has finished airing recently when it went online. I was really happy about it. I watched a couple of episodes and decided, no, this is not my thing. I, I don't want to die. 亲爱的小孩, left and right, IQE drama led by Ren Suxi and Qing Hao. Probably one of the highest production quality drama I'd say this year so far I've seen, comparable to other really high quality dramas, but holy shit, the story. <sighs> As you start to watch, you know, you just feel your pulse and, and have your blood pressure looked at before and after. It is a super agonizing experience to watch the story of the main female lead character played by Ren Sushi. The usual sins, let's say, the not so satisfactory husband <laughs> when they've got a newborn, and then also on the wife's side. The type of personality and character she has this drama will just show you all of it in detail. Reality, great acting to the point where as I was watching the drama, I'm like, this is exactly the type of life that I would want to avoid for myself. And if I continue watching with this type of story and with their great acting and presentation, I'm just gonna get depressed and angry and mental health destroyed. And honestly, it's 2022 already and it's the third year into COVID and everybody's life is pretty much effed up compared to before COVID, unless you're a big pharmaceutical company then you earn a lot of money. Life is already pretty up. I just don't want to watch other people life sinking further down with such good convincing acting, um, mental peace. What did I do? I made a decision to quit this drama and pick up another drama <laughs> on Mango Television that was airing at the time when it started. Uh -huh. I shouldn't have done that because the title already spoiled it. 没有工作的一年, <laughs> the year without job, <laughs> sounding very promising. It's led by Lama Yangzi and I like her and she's great in this drama. I watched two episodes and I quit. As I haven't seen what happened later, I did hear what happened later in this drama and I was happy that I quit this drama because later it would just raise your blood pressure even more. But just by the two episodes at the beginning, office politics that eventually kicked her out of her job and the boyfriend who's been with her for a decade or something just just started to mm, do the usual things that make your blood pressure rise up and she just walks out on the street and cry at the night and nobody cares about her and the passers-by just happen to catch her and send her to hospital and they form a new girlfriendship which is cute but i'm like it's another kind of effed up reality that right now I cannot deal with. Um, how intelligent of me to have decided to jump out of left and right and jump right into a year without job. At that point, you've already spent half of your day realizing what you've just chosen is likely to kill you at the end of airing all their episodes if you stick through them. We should go to period drama land for a change of scene. Contemporary life, too close to us, too depressing. I clicked open who rules the world. I watched the first 12 or so episodes in one go and then didn't go back and check it. And after a while, it's now in the 30s or whatever. Let's just see what happens. Randomly clicking through episodes and you start to see really funny things <laughs> that make you feel, ah, it was actually a clever idea that I quit this drama. Why did I go back? Human photocopier with your hand. I thought it was a Chinese fantasy, not Harry Potter. People getting sticked through by a sword. Literally not even their eyebrows start to frown just even a little bit. They're just like, Zhao Lu started falling asleep. Are you falling asleep? Ah, oh, she's about to fall asleep when she got sticks through in her chest. Oh, and then she, she also thought it was a good idea to stick a cannonball with a sword. I have to just do this for everybody involved in the production, for the directors, for the actors, for everybody on set who are able to actually film it and not laugh their stomach out being able to stick through it without making every shot a gag reel shot. They're great actors because with that kind of ridiculous script and plot, they can just so trust in the moment and actually manage to finish shooting it. <coughs> Chinese drama has such a bright future. 
Clearly, period drama land is not a safe place. Let's go to Mingguo because there's a Mingguo drama that's just started. Let's just see whether it is better than Yu Jian Qingxin last year. Liang Cheng Mei Jing Zhi Ji He. I shouldn't have expected and hoped for anything because it start to look like immediately, really, from the first episode, Liu Xinghua Yuan. Because it's pretty much the same story structure that just put into Mingguo with Chen Duling and Dou Xiao and. Yeah, Lai Yi, you're here again. Hey, I, I did, like I saw you in Qie Shi Tian Sha ten minutes ago, and now you're in this one. I guess like, there's no escape. Mix and match, and all the bullying of the girl at school by all kinds of other people is like, come on, come on. It's 2022. It's already 20 years later from. <sighs> We literally have the older generation, Dao Mingsi, now acting with younger generation Shan Cai. In this world already, as if that's not enough, you want to make another Mingguo drama that looks like this. And I've heard it's totally different from the original novel that the drama is supposed to be based on, which doesn't have any of this kind of shite. And also, Chen Duling cannot act. Can we agree with that? Feeling worried about、uh, till the end of the moon. Now let's get back to contemporary drama and see if there's something that at least can xia fan. Okay, just something that you run while you're eating. I decided let's check out. Looking pretty interesting. The remake of the Korean drama, like My Boss Dies Every Day. Thousand times something like that. The Chinese version, Love in a Loop, 救了一万次的你 led by Zhang Yaqing. I really like her, and Bai Ke, he's very fun. I watched the twelve episodes of this drama, <laughs> and at the end, I decided I've just wasted twelve episodes of time of my life watching it because with such an interesting set of story that potentially is good for a high comedy, it's just. So rough. The best part of the drama really is the title song, where they do the stop motion animation with those dolls that look absolutely adorable, and then the rest of the drama, nothing is more adorable than that title sequence. The two leads acting are okay, but somehow they resolve to dub the female lead and not dub the male lead. I do not understand why that is necessary, and because she got dubbed by the voice who usually dubs Wu Jingyan. Every time I'm not looking at the screen, in my head. I see Bai Ke and Wu Jingyan acting this drama. I have to look at the screen and to realize it's not her. It's Zhang Yaqing. Ha! Huh, beautiful. In this drama, the guy dies so many times in so many colorful ways, and the drama never actually, even for once, stopped. And think about how unfortunate that is truly for him. They take such a light, such a lightweight angle of looking at this guy falling down. <laughs> A bottomless elevator and die, getting electrocuted, getting taken away by a tornado, getting run over by a car, every way imaginable, dying, and it becomes such a light and funny experience that the female lead literally doesn't have any human reaction to it. Like scared, shocked, feeling worried about. Like she wants to get out of the loop, therefore she. Tries to save him, not because she realizes every time he dies, actually dies for real. They do come back, but he has to suffer. It's like also the writer doesn't really care about this guy has to die so many times, and they literally would die voluntarily so that they can I don't know get the lottery money for one part of the <laughs> plot. I'm like, really, you take that that easily? I just somehow don't quite buy that angle of looking at death at such a lighthearted way. And then even if you don't think about that part, the rest of the funny plot isn't really being. Played at its maximum potential, and then the production quality of this drama is really, really, really rough. The stylist of the two leads, the lighting people, the editing, the set—it looks cheap and unrefined. Now let's get to New Shi's Fate, which has just started airing. Love Lady, Jiang Shu Ying, Liu Mingtao. Okay, Peng Yuchang. I thought this one is gonna be good, and a friend of mine who is also in the industry. Watched a couple of episodes and told me, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm like, okay, I should go and check. I should, after I make this video, text her and ask her again why, because <laughs> I don't get it. It's not good. A drama about lawyers, court cases that actually does not make sense in that department at all. Looking at all the cases that happens in this drama and how these two ladies deal with it, um, you're gonna laugh at so many things they do that does not make sense. Then when you look at <laughs> the casting choices, very. Baffling actress Liu Mingtao. She's not that young anymore, and she does look like a middle-aged lady, which is fine. But why is the actor who plays her father an actress? 
playing her mother, looking like her brother and sisters. Then it has such a bad filter that making everybody looking so pale and white. Look at Jiang Shuyin, she literally looks paler than Nicole Kidman. And the worst part is definitely the Nianxia story with the older woman, younger man <laughs> relationship brought to us in this drama by Jiang Shuyin and Peng Yuchang, a pairing that just does not work. I have no problem with older woman, younger man. Oh, I like it. Okay, if you do it well. I can imagine the Jing Chen and Wang Anyu one that hasn't even aired yet. They just finished shooting, but it probably will work very well because he looks like the type of young guy who can impress that type of lady. When Peng Yuchang is trying to kiss Jiang Shuyin, it literally looks like a high schooler trying to kiss his teacher. It's so toe-grabbingly embarrassing and weird. Not to mention, they actually have no emotional build-up. Their relationship is purely carnal. I think it was episode two that they start to kiss and have the full one night thing happening. Why? Jiang Shuyin, your role a successful lady lawyer of that age, right? Like, what do you find in this guy that impresses you so much? I don't see, like there's no attraction, there's no reason why that should happen. There's actually no point for Peng Yuchang's role to exist in this drama. Because if you take him out, it doesn't affect any of the main plotline, any of the cases. He really is just plopped in there so that he can have this older woman, younger man relationship in his drama that actually doesn't work at all. Zero chemistry, awkward, the worst older woman, younger man couple I've seen in Chinese drama land. If you want to go and check out this drama, my advice is just don't. To wrap up this video and then make the situation worse after watching that many dramas that for all kinds of reasons, this and that just makes my life feel even worse. I actually tested out a little bit of that drama, 请叫我总监, master of my own. And I was so right. Before this drama aired, when I predicted because of the Lin Gengxin and Tan Songyun and the synopsis, I had that feeling. This is going to be another super cringy, crappy, shock you with its unreasonable setup and horrible lines and plot drama that a lot of people are gonna rant about. I was so right. This drama, I don't know how I should put it, but basically the only type of people I would suggest to go and watch the drama that actually will do you good is if you have chronological low blood pressure that cannot be helped by anything, watch this drama. At least while you're watching it, your blood pressure is gonna be at a very comfortable place for you, health and longevity. For this drama, number one is Lin Gengxin. I really think he should stop acting now. He should go back to school, get a professional coach, sit cold for a while, sort out the basics of his acting before he go back in front of the camera and stop producing crap. His accent, I find it almost a mental torture to watch his drama, Northeastern accent. That just does not fit the type of role he's playing. And to make it worse, it's not just his accent is terrible. His line delivery, his pacing, where he put the emphasis in it every sentence is just so wrong and bad. That level of line delivery doesn't deserve to be called a professional actor. Anybody who does that like that at school, acting school, will not even pass for their end of the semester exam. Like this is not acceptable. And then you look at the script writing. Somehow I feel, I don't want a conspiracy theory this whole thing, but I feel they write it intentionally like this so that the audiences can all get so angry. Everyone's blood pressure can get raised so much. Therefore people rant about it and it gets more traffic. Like that's the only point I can see why they would write so many characters like that in ways that just like makes your mind go <laughs> how much of a bully the male lead is. It's the type of not even trying to hide its real intention and super supercharged gaslighting that happens in a professional career world imaginable. If I were Ning Meng, if I were Tan Songyun's bro and then make coffee for this boss all the time, after what he said to me, I would have poured that coffee in his face and happy to see him get burned. And at the same time, I'll take off my shoe and then knock my heel into his skull and better it makes a hole. That's how terrible this guy's character is to this lady. And somehow they make this kind of script and film it and make it a drama and then put it out there and like thinking like this is actually a story worth telling. And somehow at the end of it, uh, they're gonna get together. They're a couple. They actually end up together. I don't understand what is going on these days in scriptwriter's mind, in drama maker's mind. <sighs> so this is the uh, overall experience of a Chinese drama reviewer watching Chinese dramas around the time of April and May of 2022. <laughs> My life is beautiful. And the other day I just saw another Chinese uh, sort of renter of drama, I said, okay. Uh, not a big fan of his work, but there's one new video he just made where he interviewed somebody who's in the industry, who is actually a producer who makes this type of dramas, like the S plus Tencent dramas that are 
totally crap. It's a quite enlightening and expected thing. And I know it's happening, but you know, it's still very hurtful to hear that. Frankly, coming out from somebody like that, basically they say they consider the type of projects like Miro Twin City, like um, Pearl Eclipse or like Qie Shi Tian Xia Who Rules the World or Qian Gu Jue Chen, uh, Ancient Love Poetry as very successful projects. The only thing they care about is when this drama gets out, how much money we can get back. Does it increase the subscription to the website? If it increases a lot, does it increase the ad income? If it does, and these projects actually do that. It brings more people, more subscriptions. I don't know where it comes from, maybe fandom, you know, and then ads. It generates more money. So in their mind, this type of projects are successful projects. They don't care about the drama is crap. They think crap drama doesn't exist. There are only successful projects that makes money. Failure projects that don't, such as Imperial Coroner. Public's opinion is it's a low budget drama, but surprised us with high quality. Whereas from the producer and platform's point of view, it's a failure project because they didn't manage to make that much money. This is how it works now. In content creation, money comes first than everything else. In China, I'm not saying everywhere else, but it's in China, how beautiful. Every time I make a video and put it out, I actually apologize in my heart to all the potential audiences who are gonna see my video. Chinese Romland produces 99% these days. Crap. Whether it will get resurrected and get better, who knows, you know, if you live long enough, anything can happen. For now, as a Chinese drama reviewer, I think the only reason that can sustain me making my videos day in, day out, day after day and not giving up is that um, I'm also waiting for that day. With a little twinkling hope of something may get better in the future, I'm here. Swimming through the sea of crap for you lovely people. Anyway, that should be the end of this video. Thank you for sticking through it. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy doing whatever makes you happy doing, okay? And I feel unlikely that would be watching Chinese dramas. Am I right? <laughs>